Hello everybody, uh, this is Brother Luke, uh, Sin City Preacher. Recently I met a fellow and we got into a conversation. I was telling him about my ministry on YouTube. And he asked me uh, what denomination I was. And I said that I would really be considered non-denominational. Uh, if I was classified, I'd probably be called a grace believer. And he said, what's a grace believer? And I said, well, we believe that salvation is based upon uh, faith alone in Christ alone. And he said, oh, so uh, you believe in the uh, the five souls? And I said, Five souls, I, I'm not familiar with that term, the five souls. And he said, well, these were the five principles that came out of the Reformation. And I, I said, oh, you mean, you, did you say five solas? Uh, I, I misunderstood him. And I said, yeah, the five solas, I certainly do hold to the five solas. And we discussed it further and, I was happy to know that he was in a complete agreement. So uh, we just had a joyful time uh, knowing that we were both, uh, you know, eternally saved because of our faith in Jesus, our Savior. But it made me realize that uh, in all of the videos I've made on YouTube, I haven't really discussed the five solas. Uh, I've referred many times that uh, we're saved by uh, by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone. So I certainly refer to three of the five solas. But I'd like to discuss all five of them now and uh, state why all five of these are very, very important and are basically really critically important. Um, sola is... Uh, it simply means soul or alone. Um, and so uh, the first one I want to discuss is sola gratia, which is grace alone. Now, one of the most common definitions for grace that I've heard is it is unmerited favor. In other words, we get favor from God that uh, is not based upon our personal merit. Uh, and, and, and this grace is free, it's unearned. And the Bible even says that uh, uh, in order it, for it to be grace, you cannot have any works mixed in with it. Otherwise, the Bible says grace is no longer grace. But grace is uh, given to us by God because God is love. God loves us so much that he wants to be gracious to all of us. Gracious, that means that he is uh, giving, uh, showing kindness, generosity, uh, clemency, uh, favor to us. Because of his great love for us, not because we deserve it in any way. So, salvation is strictly based upon God's loving kindness, his mercy, and his graciousness to us, his grace. The second of these solas is sola fide, which stands for Faith alone, solely by faith. And faith is, um, there are words that can be basically interchangeable with faith. Uh, when we have faith in Jesus, that means that we believe in Jesus. We believe in his ability and his faithfulness to give us eternal life. Uh, it means that we have confidence in Jesus. 
It means that we we trust Jesus to do what he promised to do. And that is, give us eternal life when we trust him for it. And it means that we rely upon Jesus. We depend upon Jesus exclusively. Now, when we say that we have faith alone, that means that uh, there are no additional requirements. Uh, for example, in uh, Ephesians 2, 8, and 9, it says, For it is by grace we are saved through faith. And this, not of ourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. So our salvation is by grace, through faith, without any works required. Faith alone, without any works required. It also says, we conclude, this is, uh, um, I think it's uh, Romans 3.28, Paul says, uh, therefore we conclude that a man is justified by faith apart from the deeds of the law. Justified by faith alone. So, we're saved by grace, through faith, and the object of our faith must be Jesus Christ alone. That is the next of the solas. Solus Christus. Christ alone. Now, I've encountered a lot of people uh, that claim that they have faith. And I don't doubt that they do. But sadly, many people have misplaced their faith. They have their, placed their faith in their own ability to qualify for heaven. Placed their faith in their personal merit. They placed their faith in uh, a religious system. They've placed their faith in priests and popes. But our faith must be in the correct thing. In fact, the correct person. The person of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ must be the object of our faith. At, at the exclusion of everything else. When we say Christ alone, that means it excludes everything else. Our faith is exclusively in Jesus Christ. And who is Jesus Christ? Well, the Bible says that uh, God commendeth his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So God loved us so much that he actually became a man. The Bible says God was made flesh. God was made into a man, Jesus Christ. Why did he do it? Why did he become a man? It was necessary. He could only die for our sins if he became a man. So God was manifest in the flesh. God was made flesh as Jesus Christ, as the Son of God. So we're saved by the grace of God through faith alone in Christ alone. Our faith is in Jesus Christ as our Savior. Now, if you want to know the truth, you need to know where the truth is. Jesus Christ is the truth. But if we want to know more about Jesus and more about God, who they are and and, and what the, the, he has done for us and how we should conduct ourselves. Uh, kind of a, an owner's manual for our lives. Where do we get this information? Well, you do not get uh, this information because of what a pope tells you or any religious leader. You don't get this from uh, any traditions that have come down throughout history. 
Our truth does not come from the traditions of men. Our truth comes from the scriptures. And that is the next of these five solas. Sola Scriptura. The, the scriptures are commonly called the Holy Bible. This is where God recorded the truth. And he used men to write it. But it's the word of God because God used men just as you and I use an ink pen to write. God used men to write the scriptures. So we must use the scriptures as our litmus tests. Rather than using human reason, rather than using human teachings or traditions, we must go to the scriptures for our truths. So, therefore, sola scriptura, scriptures alone, is what we use to test what is true. And then the final of these five solas is Soli Deo Gloria. Glory alone to God. Now, if you say that you're, uh, you believe Jesus is your Savior, you have faith in Jesus, but, but, or and, or if, you're, you have ifs, ands, and buts, and that, or canceling, this whole concept of salvation by grace through faith in Christ alone. You can, you cannot, uh, take any of the glory that belongs to Jesus Christ by incorporating any of your own works. All the glory belongs to Jesus. In fact, all the praise goes to Jesus. All the glory, all the credit. And when you say that faith in Jesus as your Savior is somehow insufficient and that you must also contribute to this, then in a way, you're actually stealing the glory and praise and credit that belongs exclusively to Christ. All the glory belongs to Christ. Give him all the glory, all the credit for our salvation. Jesus Christ, he is our great Savior God. Praise him and don't try to take any credit for yourself. That's why it says in Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, it's not by works, lest anyone should boast. All right. So if uh, you are not a Christian now, if you do not uh, have eternal life, then you can receive it simply by putting your faith completely in Jesus Christ as your Savior. Understand that you can't save yourselves no matter what you do. You can't save yourself by joining any religion. You can join all the religions of the world. You become the most religious person in the world. But it's all futile. It won't do you any good. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So if you want life, if you want to know what the truth is, you must Put your faith in Jesus completely, and he will give you life, life everlasting. So I, I hope you'll do that right now. And if you do, make a comment. And uh, Nothing would make me happier to know that you put your faith in Jesus Christ right now. So bless you in the name of our great Savior God, Jesus Christ.